Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to this tutorial in which I'll show you how I use Lumi32 with Raya Pro in my workflow. Now if this is the first you're hearing of Lumi32, it's a world first in that it's a 32-bit luminosity mask that brings us a whole load of new functionality like lab mode, individual RGB channels, user-defined presets, a dynamic histogram, and if you want to learn more, appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now is a link if you click on that, you'll see a video which details more of the functions within Lumi32. Now, in my opinion, this is a huge step up from Instamask, which is a fantastic 16-bit luminosity mask generator, which accesses the masks within Photoshop. But Lumi32 creates its own masks outside of Photoshop, so it's a plug-in panel hybrid. Now, Raya Pro is so much more than just luminosity masks. It has something for every step of our workflow, so it has Color options where we can add or remove specific colors, add warmth, add a cooler hue. We have color correction options. We have a dodge and burn panel where we can also add details, create a beautiful Orton effect, a fake HDR effect, zone contrasts. We have a filter and finish panel where we've got revealed dust, sharpening for the web, lots of different functions. And we also have two panels which include options for exposure blending for people who are new to exposure blending. And of course, we have the Raya Pro Hub right here. So how do we combine Lumi32 and Raya Pro? Well, let's look at this image. We've got three open windows here for my three exposures. Now I want to collapse these into one window. So all I need to do in Raya Pro is press stack. And that will collapse all of those windows into one. And we are left with three exposures, three layers, sorry. Now all we need to do is blend those layers. So we've got the brightest one on top. In the middle, we've got the darkest exposure and we have our base exposure in the middle. We want the darker exposure for the sky. We want the brighter exposure for the foreground and all those lovely details. So this is where Lumi32 comes into play. I can open up the panel and I'm gonna build all the masks around the brighter exposure. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we can make a better selection of the foreground and exclude the sky here because you can see there's a big difference in terms of brightness between the two. In other words, the sky is nice and white and the foreground's dark. In the darker exposure, we don't have that distinction. We have information in the sky and the foreground dark, so it'll be harder to create a mask. So what we need to do is make the brighter exposure visible, but we can select the darker exposure. Now I want to create a mask of the sky, so I can press brights one or brights three, and brights three does a good job of selecting the sky, so the sky is nice and bright, but the foreground's dark. And if we're happy with that, I can just press apply and it goes on to the darker exposure. So there's before and after. That's the base exposure with the overexposed sky. And now we have that sky blended in. Now I think this blend is a little bit strong, so I'm gonna bring down the opacity of that darker exposure. Just a little bit, not too much. Also, I think the water in the foreground is perhaps a little bit dark to the right here. So I'm gonna select the mask of the darker exposure, choose a brush, a black brush, and I'm just gonna paint out some of that darker exposure in the foreground. I think that looks a lot better. Now I need to bring some information into the foreground here. So making the brighter exposure visible again, I'm gonna open Lumi32, and this time we're gonna go for a darks three. Now that does give us a good selection, but a lot of the foreground is actually a little bit dark. You see dark specks here. So let's see if I can make the foreground much wider. And I can bring the smoothness along, just so there's a little bit more contrast. And if I press amplification, that might make the foreground much brighter. So there you go, most of that is now nice and bright. Now I quite like that selection and there's every possibility I'm gonna come back to it in the workflow. So I can hold down darks three for three seconds and I can change that and just type dark foreground. Now that preset is gonna change names and it's gonna bring up this mask whenever I press it and that's a permanent change. So whenever we close Photoshop and in the future we open it up again, that will still be there. Unless we reset it, which we can do pressing this settings button. Now that I've done that, I can press apply and you can see we've applied the mask to that brighter exposure. And again, that's very bright. So I'm just gonna bring down the opacity of that exposure. We want the image to be not too bright because this was shot just after sunset. So it should be dark. So if I close Lumi32, there's the before and after. See, we've brought loads of information into the image now. Actually, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit more. So now, a quick before and after of all the exposure blending. That's before and that's after. 
Now I'm going to bring back just some of the overexposed areas in the sky here using a really cool function in Raya Pro called Dark Sky. So if I press that, you'll see we've darkened the highlights in the image. And if I find that change is a little bit too general, so it's affecting too many areas, I can press this Adjust button on Raya Pro. And it allows us to change the mask on that layer so it's more specific, more targeted to the highlights. So again, there's the before and after. Now another way of doing that is by adding a clipping mask to the darker layer. We could select the darker layer and open up a curves layer and just press this button here and it clips it to the darker layer. And you see we can bring up and down the curve and it's not affecting any other parts of the image, just the sky because it's clipped to the darker exposure so it's only affecting the areas that the darker exposure is showing in this image. I'm going to delete that because I don't really need it in there. But that's one advantage of luminosity masking over things like blend if function. Because if we try to attach a clipping mask to a layer which has blend if assigned, then we don't get the same effects because blend if is dynamic. It's a process that changes as that layer changes. So it's one of the strong advantages of luminosity masks. Now I think I should add just a little bit more contrast here. Brighten up the image a little bit. Maybe even darken some of it. Not too much. See if that's added a little bit more of a kick. Just a little bit. And let's say I want to add a little bit more detail into the, the foreground here, into the rocks. Well, I can open up Raya Pro and go to, let's say, the 50% gray layer and dodge and burn. So I press brush, set white as my foreground color. And my opacity set to 40%, so it shouldn't be too strong. And we're just brightening up this area, but actually, I can change that blend mode of that layer to overlay. You see, we just added a lot more kick to the foreground. But obviously, it's affecting the sky. So all we need to do is take this mask on the brighter exposure that we created earlier. Press Control and left click on the mask. And you see, we've got an active selection. And with the dodge and burn layer selected, we can choose the mask and it applies that selection to the mask. And of course, we bring down the opacity of that layer because the effect's far too strong. That's before and after. So we've added just a little bit more contrast to that area. And I can also add a little bit of an autumn effect, which I know can be overused, but sometimes in situations like this, just a soft autumn effect adds a little bit of mood. So if I press OK, bring the opacity all the way down, let's say to 15%. And I'm going to zoom in just to see if that made a nice difference. So this is with the autumn effect applied, and that's after. You see, it's just taken the edge off some of that contrast. It's made it a little bit less harsh. But I would completely understand if you don't like the Orton effect, because for me, it's hit and miss sometimes. So let's see if I can reach a compromise and bring it down to 10%. Now, I'm just going to crop the image, because I think we've got just a little bit too much empty space in the sky. And we've got some strange little rocks sticking out here. So I'm going to crop them off. And this gives sort of a panoramic feel to the image, which I really like. And now to finish, I can merge all these layers, go to the Filters and Finish panel, and press Reveal Dust. And this will reveal any hidden sensor dust. So zooming in, we can see we've got some sensor dirt there, hidden. I mean, you really can't see it very well on the full-size image, but it's there in the Reveal Sensor Dust layer. So if I select the layer I just created, Choose the patch tool. I can make a decent selection of that area. And of course, it's not changing right now because I'm only affecting the layer below the reveal sensor dust layer. So I can delete that layer, zoom out, and if I'm ready and I like that image, I can resize it and sharpen it for the web. So I can choose the width, let's say 2048, press OK. And now this asks me if I want to convert the color profile to sRGB, recommended for the web. And then it's done, and I can choose the strength of the sharpening with these layers down here, make it really sharp or a little bit softer. 